Greetings, Dave Berger here. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here we are. It feels like it has been three months that we have been connecting together in this way. It's probably just about that length of time. Please know that I miss you all and I am praying for all of you as we wander and wonder through these days and weeks and months. If this were a normal year, and it's certainly not, I would be participating in and helping to lead Sharon's middle school mission trip this week. When we talk about the purpose of mission trips, we want our students and their adult leaders to learn, serve, and grow as we find out how God is already at work in a place and in a way that they haven't discovered yet. This summer, our middle school students would have been serving in Milwaukee. Why Milwaukee, you might ask? There's an amazing ministry in Milwaukee called Adullam Outreach. Adullam started in an old, abandoned downtown warehouse that the city was going to tear down and sold to Adullam Outreach for $1. Adullam serves the practical and spiritual needs of the community with dignity and love. And the organization sees itself as a modern-day version of the Book of Acts Church, meeting together regularly to share life and grow in faith. In the past, when we have been able to partner in the work that Adullam is doing, there's always action and busyness all around us. Renovations, donations, community partnerships were always a part of the daily schedules. But here's what struck me the most about that place. There was always someone praying for what was taking place in that community. If I was carrying a donated mattress or installing drywall and someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, it's your turn to pray, that responsibility became the most important thing. I was to stop what I was doing and head to the prayer room, which was filled with messages of hope and prayer requests. Someone was always praying for the work being done there. Deacon Jamie shared something on Facebook last week. I've mentioned this before, but I'll include it here as well. I think this is really helpful. He talked about three things that we could do for our neighbor. Say, I'm sorry. Truly listen. And yes, that means don't talk, just listen. Learn to understand and have empathy. And he added a fourth thing. Pray before and after doing the other three things. One of the things that I love about middle school students is you sort of always know what they're thinking. And that's because they tell you. They'll blurt it out and it sometimes comes out in ways that can be offensive or alarming, but it's honest and real and they're actually wondering. It's a gift to know exactly where they are. When I tell people that I work quite a bit with middle school students, I often hear, on purpose? And my answer is always yes. Now, part of that is because in some respects, I still are one. But it's also because my middle school experiences, well, back then you may remember it was called junior high school, those experiences weren't always the greatest, and my life greatly improved when I figured out who I was and who God was creating me to be, and I want to be some small part of helping our students navigate through all of that as well. Mission trips are fertile soil for great conversations because we have so much more time to visit in the vans, at the dinner table, during our church group time and while serving together. We set aside our former routines, which often include too much busyness, and we live in community together for five or six days. In a sense, that is what's happened to us over the past three months. Well, at least the setting aside of normal routines. 
Hopefully you have found new ways to live in community with your quarantine. But I do recognize that for some, being together at home is very difficult. And for others, it means isolation. And that's where social media enters in. Whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or an endless stream of TikTok videos, the apps that define us can also divide us. Many of you may be entering into new conversations with friends and loved ones for the first time, and some opinions and questions may be difficult to hear or are contrary to your own long-standing beliefs. I know that I have a tough time connecting in authentic conversation when we cannot see face to face. When we disagree, do we lean into that discomfort or do we isolate? Unfriend? Unplug? Curate our friends list so that we only hear voices which agree with ours? Do we see that discomfort as a door out by blaming the messenger and disregarding the message? Or as a door in by asking, why does this unsettle me? What would it mean for me if this were true? Mandy Hale says, growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. Now, she may be talking about a life situation or a work situation that needs changing. But when I read and reread that statement, I focus on mindset. Some are willing to grow, learn, and change. Others value tradition, the way things have always been, and they see a change in viewpoint as being hypocritical to our former selves. When we feel like we are falling apart or that we are losing pieces of our life or pieces of ourselves, we might be tempted to ask God to put us back together the way we were. But to God, who is making all things new and who is not done with us yet, those pieces fell for a reason. We are changing and growing and learning and becoming. Instead of feeling like we are breaking, we can feel like we are breaking the darkness, like a new day. When you replace, why is this happening to me, with what is this trying to teach me, everything shifts. If we can honestly say, I've never really thought about it that way before, and be willing to change our minds and hearts without seeing that as a character flaw, we are on our way toward growing as a person. And remember that as we strive for justice and peace, which is, after all, one of our confirmation promises at our affirmation of baptism services, as we strive for justice and peace, we may grow weary. We must ask God to help and guide us. In that weariness, if you feel alone, unsupported, or not a member of a team, perhaps you could start an action-oriented group chat with a trusted circle. Research organizing efforts and reach out to learn how you can get involved. Attend a skill-building webinar to expand your skill set. If you feel hopeless, disempowered, or incapable, listen to a podcast or watch a program where someone fights for change. Read a bit of a book that focuses on social progress. Connect and share with a trusted friend or accountability partner. Take one small action. Make a donation. Sign a petition. Drop off water and supplies. Make a phone call. In upcoming weeks, we'll talk about what to do if you just can't unplug, if you're feeling overstimulated, or if you feel stuck in one place. Here's the important thing to remember. God is still speaking and still working for justice and peace through all of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And that work doesn't only rely on you or me. Rest is not the enemy of change. It is one part of its fuel. Be well, friends. Peace.